On October 6, social media shared videos and images of a flying wing-shaped aircraft crash near Konstantinovka in Donetsk, about 15 kilometers from Ukrainian lines. It is located northwest of Toretsk, which is still under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. The examination of the wreckage photos has confirmed that it was a Russian S-70 Okotnik B combat drone or UCAV. However, this aircraft has not yet officially entered service with the Russian Aerospace Forces. As per the Russian Telegram channels, the incident occurred on October 5 and the incident was caused by friendly fire. A guided R-74M missile launched from the weapons bay of a Su-57 fighter jet. The channel speculated that the cause was a malfunction in the exchange of tactical information and target designation. Other technical issues, including a failure in the identification system to recognize the drone as friendly, are also possible. The software of the S-111N onboard communication system of the Su-57 multifunctional fighter jet is designed to be highly adaptable for use in controlling the S-70 UAV. The secure data exchange channels between the S-111N and the terminals installed on the Okotnik drones integrate the S-57 and S-70 into a single information network. This enables Su-57's pilots to use the UAVs as unmanned wingmen conducting radar and electronic reconnaissance and engaging in long-range air combat with R-77-1 missiles based on target designation provided by the Su-57's N-036 Belka onboard radar. Despite the loss of an advanced strike UAV, which is significant, the presence of the S-70 in the combat zone indicates that the Russian aerospace forces are increasing the use of unmanned strike systems, with the Okotnik still in the testing phase. Both the Okotnik B and the Inokodets UAVs, which had not previously been seen on the front lines, have now become part of Russia's combat aviation arsenal. Their deployment is linked to the weakening of the enemy's air defenses and reflects the Russian Ministry of Defense and General Staff's intention to test, improve, and eventually use these technologies to achieve the goals of the ongoing special military operation. In Ukraine, the downing of the S-70 was attributed to the successes of their air defense forces. One Ukrainian telegram channel speculated, it became known that the Ukrainian armed forces managed to shoot down the S-70 strike drone. This suggests there will be more of them. The Russians may use them as bait for Ukrainian air defenses and aviation, and then, once those are cleared out, start destroying everything behind Ukrainian lines. However, this perspective overlooks three critical points. First, the question should be asked, how did the Su-57 and S-70 even appear over the combat zone without fear of Ukrainian air defenses? This implies that there are no effective air defenses in that area, meaning there is no one to shoot down Russian planes. Furthermore, why shoot down an experimental, though expensive, UAV instead of targeting a frontline aircraft with a pilot? Was it a mistake? Second, only in Ukraine do analysts and bloggers suggest it makes sense to use rare and costly strike UAVs as bait, instead of using the much cheaper Garand drones, which are mass-produced and widely deployed. Third, why would a stealth UCAV be used as a radar bait? For the record, based on available data, the S-70 is an imposing UCAV, with a wingspan of 20 meters, a length of 14 meters, and a takeoff weight of about 20 tons. Capable of flying at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour, it can carry 2.8 tons of munitions, divided between two internal bays. Estimates place its range at 6,000 kilometers. The S-70 has undergone modifications to enhance its stealth capabilities since its first flight. Notably, the S-70 has redesigned the nozzle of its Saturn AL-31 turbofan engine to reduce its infrared signature and radar cross-section. Initially, Russian officials suggested it would accompany the Su-57 Felon. However, they later clarified that the S-70 could conduct strikes in contested environments and use its long-range weapons to intercept enemy aircraft. Even though its serial production has not yet begun, despite being announced for 2024, the S-70 is said to have already completed at least one mission in Ukraine, as Russian forces have demonstrated a willingness to test future equipment in the operational theaters where they are deployed. Thus, the presence of an S-70 in the Donetsk area is not surprising. However, 
the reasons for its crash are more puzzling. Apparently, even though Ukrainian forces claimed responsibility for its downfall, they are unlikely to be involved. According to social media videos and all other evidence, a Russian fighter jet shot it down. Was it a Su-57 felon? The Russian fighter bomber channel on Telegram, which is close to the Russian aerospace forces, suggests so. At this stage, two hypotheses can be proposed. Either it was a friendly fire incident or the S-70 lost control, prompting the decision to shoot it down. In the latter case, it is uncertain whether it was actually on a combat mission in Ukraine. It may have simply become uncontrollable during a test flight. In any case, the UKV has fallen into Ukrainian-controlled territory, and its wreckage will undoubtedly provide a valuable source of intelligence. Now, why do you think the S-70 drone was shot down? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Please also take our memberships to encourage us.